Hi, welcome to this video which is the third part of the series on making EV troll aircraft. In this video we will discuss some of the components you will be needing for making the aircraft. But before we begin we must advise you to make sure of the safety measures. Flying machine of any kind can be extremely dangerous not only for the person flying it but for others who can come in its way. Full safety procedures must be followed. There are a variety of standards for testing the safety of an aircraft which must be adhered to. These performance and safety tests should be carried out unmanned first by controlling the aircraft remotely. Today we notice that many of the eVTOL aircrafts are made by hobbyists. In many cases we find them using larger RC model components. So the same motors used in RC aircrafts and drones are used in a higher number in the personalized eVTOL aircrafts. Now it can be the case that the calculations we made in the previous video will have to be revisited often because they will change according to the components you are able to find in the market. These components may not exactly be to your requirement and therefore the process of fabricating an aircraft can fluctuate back and forth between the design and manufacturing phase. Although you can reduce this cycling with a well thought out design. For your propulsion system we can either use a combination of propeller and motor or use electric ducted fan or in short EDF. In the EDF a motor is already included so we do not have to acquire it separately. So let's begin with the propellers. There are a wide variety of propellers available of different design and sizes and different materials. The propellers required for personnel carrying eVTOL aircraft would range from 60 cm that is 20 inches and above in diameter length. As mentioned previously, we worked out that 1 meter diameter propellers consume the least amount of power based purely on mass flow rate and exit velocity principle and for a loaded aircraft weight of 200 kilograms. Fortunately, there are propellers available in those sizes of around 1 meter because of an established light aircraft industry. There are alloy based and wooden propellers, but carbon fiber propellers are the best suited because of their light weight and relatively higher stiffness. Note that when an eVTOL aircraft climbs up vertically, all the weight of the aircraft is solely resting on the propellers and therefore whenever selecting a prop, make sure that it can bear the weight. This is normally mentioned in the specification sheet as the maximum thrust the propeller can support. Also when selecting a propeller, look out for the moment of inertia value. A low moment of inertia prop will accelerate quicker to a certain RPM. The torque required by a propeller to spin at a certain speed is also directly proportional to the moment of inertia. Also one thing to bear in mind is that larger propellers require more current to be pushed through the motor because they require more torque to move. We will elaborate this point further but let's now discuss motors. There are a huge variety of motors in the market. The preferred motors though are the brushless pancake motors used in large drones and the same can be used in an eVTOL aircraft. It is quite common to see a KV rating on the motor. This simply suggests how many RPM the motor will spin at 1 volt if there is no load on the motor. Having a high KV value is desirable because it gives a greater range of RPM but more importantly it should not supersede the maximum torque specification that the motor can handle. If the motor is loaded beyond its torque specifications then the KV value would not stand for anything. You will notice that larger motors will generally have a lower KV value compared to their smaller counterparts. Motor manufacturers would have normally carried out tests for the combination of motors with different propellers. They often provide performance data in tables. The tables will have thrust force sometimes expressed in kilograms for convenience, the RPM, the power used, and the efficiency. Please pay special attention to these values as they will help you select the right components for your design. Although fasteners for joining the motor and propellers 
are standard but it is worth buying both from the same supplier because you can get the test data and sometimes also discount. It must be understood that voltage applied across a motor is directly proportional to the RPM while the current passing through the motor will determine the torque. For motors that have to support larger propellers, the current rating is high. A motor with low current capability will burn out before its rated life if fitted with a larger propeller. DC motors are used in drone and also in EV Toleta because not only they produce torque but they also do not require an inverter as the battery power is also DC. You will find that motors that will help you with a heavy load such as for an EV Toleta will have diameters of around 140 millimeters or above. Also make sure that the motor has a high IP rating. A minimum rating of IP33 should be considered. This is to make sure that the motor is resistant to spray in at least the vertical direction so it doesn't malfunction in rain. Finally, whatever motor you will ultimately select would have to be compatible with your electronic speed controller which is also something that you would need. So now let's look at the other alternative to motor and propeller which is the use of EDF. There are very few manufacturers of electric ducted fans and it's difficult to find an EDF with diameter of 200 millimeters and above. And it is for this reason that the EV tow aircraft called Lilium uses 36 of these ducted fans. As described earlier, EDFs are much more energy efficient compared to propeller motor configuration at certain speeds. They're also much more compact for the amount of thrust they are able to generate. For example, the German company Schubler makes a 195 mm diameter EDF which is able to produce 24 kg of thrust force. We have mentioned that EDFs are energy efficient but overall the ducted fan configuration because of their availability in small size would consume much more energy. And this is based on the principle of low mass flow rate and high velocity as discussed in the earlier videos. If larger ducted fans are used then their thrust to weight ratio declines. We will have to wait and see if EDFs will be available for 500 mm diameter and above. Although it must be mentioned that in Martin's jetpack two EDFs of 800 mm diameter have been used. These are most likely to be custom made prototypes and not readily available. Regardless of whether you use an EDF or a propeller motor, you will be needing electronic speed controller or ESC. This effectively does what a gearing system does in a conventional propulsion system. The ESC unit is normally purchased from the same supplier as that of the motor for assuring compatibility. However, in an EV tow aircraft, a simple ESC would not suffice. And we will endeavor to explain why. Hovering aircrafts are aerodynamically unstable machines. In multi-copter drones, there are stabilizing computers with gyro sensors. They regulate the ESC for spinning the motors at different RPM. Please note that for stabilization, different motors may have to be spun at different speeds. And therefore, direct input from the pilot to the ESC has to be avoided and any input for controlling the motors has to go through the onboard computer. Thus, the eVTOL aircraft has to be fly-by-wire in architecture and therefore purchasing a simple ESC system would not cut it. It has to be coupled with a stabilizing system. Let's finally discuss the energy source. In RC models, lithium polymer battery packs are commonly used. One reason for this is their easy availability and the second reason for this is the relatively higher energy density compared to other lithium chemistries. Lithium polymer can also be used in EV toll aircraft. Care, however, must be exercised to reduce the current or the total amps extracted from the battery pack at the cell level. We have already worked out that it would require very high power to lift the aircraft. Even at relatively higher system voltage, it would take several hundred amps during the vertical takeoff phase. 
So the current should be divided by having the maximum number of cells connected in parallel configuration after the system voltage has been reached by connecting them in series. Relatively low current extraction per cell would ensure less heat loss from the battery pack. We'll briefly discuss the frame and the outer body for EV tow aircraft. The objective of the frame is to provide a platform for mounting all components. The body of the aircraft should provide safety and control surfaces. Fixed wings, as mentioned before, significantly increase the range of the aircraft. Also, the fuselage can be made shaped in an airfoil to give more lift per unit area. Aluminium alloys are popular in the aircraft industry, but more recently the share of composites have increased significantly in the modern aircrafts because of their lightweight and relatively high strength. The use of composite material in your design would however increase the total budget as they are expensive. And with this the video is concluded. It is obvious that not all the topics have been covered for making an EV tow aircraft. Nonetheless, it is felt that we have touched upon the major components and this information would put a person in good stead who is looking to build a flying machine from scratch. If you learned from the video, please do hit the like button. Help our channel grow by sharing this video with your friends. If you have any questions, make sure to type them in the comment box. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your attention.